Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's crack it. I hope you are all doing very well. So I am back with a new video. This is about the Accenture pseudocode questions. Some of the most repeated questions from the previous Accenture exams. So I have collected and solved them for you guys. So this is a part two video. So if you haven't seen yet the part one, so I am putting the link in the description and go watch it for the effective preparation for Accenture. And for the complete preparation guide, subscribe to my channel. Let's crack it. I'll be putting more and more videos which are which will be useful for you to get placed. And let's dive into our today's video. So here comes our very first pseudocode question. So what will be the output of the following code? So first line: three integers are initialized. Three integers a, b, c. So each of the integer is given a value. A is equals to b is equals to 40, and c zero. And then b value is updated to b is equal to c plus 2 the value of c is 0 so b becomes 2 so b is updated and then comes a if condition so remember guys if 0 comes within uh, if the statements are i mean not executed the code inside the if is not executed if 0 comes within if and other than 0 any integer comes then the code must the code will be executed so here if of a is if of a value is 2 so hence the code will be executed the code is c is equals to 1 c is updated again c value is 1 finally i am printing a minus b plus c a value is 2 unchanged b is updated to 2 b, a minus b plus c is 1 so final answer is 1 option c is the correct answer and moving on to the next question here comes a recursive function so guys this is called a recursive function what does it mean by recursive means a function calling itself so here if you observe the function name is fun fun of two arguments so this function contains the calling function again like return value is containing the function name itself so a function calling itself is called a recursive function here we are given a recursive function so let's look at it the values of a and b are given as initially a is equals to 10 b is equals to 10 then entering the function if b greater than 0 ampers and this is and operator logical and a greater than 0 so we have to observe whether b is greater than 0 of course b is 10 and a is 10 so this if statement is true and hence the return value will be returning 13 plus again the function is calling itself fun of 0 comma 0 I have told you right this is, this is a recursive function so now the values of a and b are become have become a is equals to 0 and b is equals to 0 and now let's start the function again like if b greater than 0 and a greater than 0 false now the a and b values are 0 hence this is false i mean this if statement is not executed and if is end end if so we have to end this uh, if statements and return a minus b the value of a minus b is 0 minus 0 so 0 so finally this has returned this function has returned 0 so the, on the whole the overall answer is 13 option b is the correct answer and here comes the pseudo code so there are two integers from sum and n initialized to n is uh, n is equal to 7 value and sum is equal to 0 so we are running a loop from i is equals to 1 to i is equals to 7 till the value becomes 7 so now looking into the code so the code inside the loop is sum is equals to sum plus i star i so in the first iteration let me write here iteration 1 in the first iteration sum value will be sum is equals to let me take it as s s is equals to some initial value 0 0 plus i star i in the first iteration i value is 1 1 star 1 and then in the second iteration it becomes sum is equals to in uh, some value sum become 1 1 plus i star i 2 star 2 so and then again it becomes 1 plus sum is equals to sum plus 2 star 2 square let me write plus 3 square and then 1 square plus 2 square 3 square plus 4 square so the loop will be running until the seventh iteration so in the final iteration the sum value will be stored as 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square till 7 square so if we calculate the value the answer we will be getting is 140 option d is the correct answer so indirectly we can say this is a pseudo code this is a code written in order to print the sum of the first sum of the squares of the first seven integers 
moving on here we got a lot of else if cases so we can term it as nested else if cases so nested else if cases so if we look into the code there are three integers defined a is equals to 5 b is equals to 8 and c is equals to 2 three different values are stored in these integers and let's look at the code so here comes the first if condition so if a greater than b we need to worry about this code only if the condition passes so is a greater than b a is 5 b is uh, 8 so 5 is greater than 8 this is false the statement is false hence we don't need to worry about this code and if this case is failed like a greater than b if condition is failed we need to move to the else case so within else case we encounter few more else if cases like now if b greater than c b is 8 and c is 2 so this is true this statement is true hence we need to worry about this statement so we are supposed to print b the value of b is 8 so 8 is printed and then so we need uh, here there is another else case but we know we don't need to worry about this else case because only when this condition fails so this else case will be executed so as this if, if if case is passed so again this else case we don't need to worry about so finally the integers printed are only 8 so the output is 8 so moving on to the next here we got a question a initially there are two integers a is 6 and b is 7 so two uh, different integers are initialized and here we are having a function so the first line contains a uh, if condition if a greater less than b so 6 is less than b of course and this is a logical and operator so a greater than 0 of course 6 is greater than 0 so this is uh, true hence we enter the if loop and the code containing inside if a is a plus 10 a is updated to 16 because uh, 6 plus 10 16 and then again we have another if case a greater than 0 and b greater than 0 so again this is true so now we are perform we have to perform zor operation on a is equals to a is or b 16 is or b is 7 so writing in the binary representation so 16 can be reprinted as directly 16 so here 16 the bit should be 1 and other all bits should be 0 so this is the representation of 16 and then representation of 4 is, uh, 7 is 4 plus 2 plus 1 so rest all bits are zeros now performing zor on these two in these just we get so first bit is or exclusively present in seven second exclusively present in seven again same one and this is zero so this is again present in 16 so finally the answer will be 16 or 7 is equals to 16 plus 4 20 22 23 so here we get a is updated to a is updated to 23 and then again Finally, A is right shifted by 1. So, A is 23. A is right shifted by 1. 8, 4, 2, 1, 16. So, 23 can be reprinted as 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Yeah, it should be 0. This bit. On right shifting, I have already told you that on right shifting, we will be appending zeros on the left side. So, here comes a 0 and then all other bits should be written as this. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. 1 0 1 1 and this should be ignored i mean this should will be removed so we get 8 plus 2 plus 1 10 plus 1 11 so a value has become updated to 11 a is 11 and we need to return finally a plus b b is 7 so a plus b value is 18 this is the final answer 18 is the final answer so moving on here comes the next question so guys this is related to operator concept so this is left shift operator and this is the right right shift operator if you observe these symbols now let's move uh, solve the question a is equals to there are two integers a and b so a is 4 and b is 6 they are assigned to and then when we enter the function here the arguments are a and b now a is left shifted if you observe a left shifted by a minus two positions this is called position number of position we need to shift so now a minus two value is two 
so a left shifted by two positions and b is equals to b right shifted by b minus 5 positions 6 minus 5 is 1 so we need to perform left shift operator on a and right shift operation on b so binary representation of 8 for 2 1 here 8 for 2 1 and 16 so this is for a i'm considering so initially the a value is 4 so binary representation will be 100 100 rest all are zeros now if i want to perform left shift so i need to append zeros on the right side and move this bit to the respective number of position so one position two positions so it comes at 16th value like here comes one and zero zero zeros are appended on the right side so a value became 16 now if i want to perform on b initially b value is 6 so here comes one bit and at 4 and 2 4 plus 2 is 6 6 so if i want to perform right shift operation we need to move the bits to the right position with respect to number of positions here it is only one so this bit moves to the right side and this bit moves to the right side so the final answer will be 0 1 1 and zeros will be appended on the left side so b value becomes 2 plus 1 3 a is 16 b is 3 finally a plus b is equals to 19 this is the final answer concept of opera left and right shift operations and here comes the if else related question again don't get intimidated by looking the length of the question it's an easy one so here comes there are two integers a and b so initialized to 9 and b is uh, given a value 2 so now see basically we need to worry about the if case if if condition is true we need to execute the code within the if block when the if condition is failed we need to worry about the else case but here we observe only if conditions no else cases so if a greater than b if 9 is greater than 2 yes of course it is true but in case if this is failed like uh, if this con is if condition is failed so this entire part we don't need to worry like uh, if this is false so directly we can end if and return one the option will b will be the correct answer but that's not the case here so if is true if case is true and when this is true i'm entering inside again a greater than 2 yes 9 is greater than 2 again i'm entering inside so a greater than 3 of course and even a greater than 4 so finally when this is this uh, statement is true i am returning a value b so b is 2 so remember guys whenever one return, uh, return statement is encountered within any function the function comes to an end so finally uh, once this b value is written it comes to an end option d might be so option 2 is i mean answer 2 will be the correct answer and moving on to the next here comes uh, the next question there are three different integers and initialized to p is 3 and q is 10 and r as 12 so this is fine these two lines are fine and then the, in the third line p is updated to p plus 4 which is 7 plus q 7 plus 10 17 and then in the fourth line q is updated q is q plus r q is a 10 plus 12 so 22 so until fourth line it's fine but if you observe fifth and sixth line there are operators use this operator is called zor operator guys exclusive or operator i'll be telling how uh, we can do perform zor operation but before that there is a small trick here if you observe line 5 and 6 in both of these two statements are we are changing updating the value of p but instead of uh, to, uh, executing these two lines if you observe the last line here the p is updating which is independent of the previous value of p so directly i can skip line 5 because anyhow i am changing the value of p in the final line layer last line so directly i am executing the sixth line i am simply ignoring fifth line so now p is 9 or 12 plus q so let me perform 9 or 12 so how to perform 9 or 12 binary representation of 9 first of all 8 4 2 1 so 9 is represented as 8 plus 1 so rest others are 0 so this is the representation of 9 and 12 can be represented as 8 plus 4 so 1 1 and rest all zeros 12 so in order to perform zor operation we need to consider the bits which are containing in any of one of the two integers like 
so first bit is containing in only one nine so this is i am considering and here zero so this a uh, four bit is containing only in 12 so i am making it as one and this one for eight is respected to eight position both are containing one so i cannot consider that so this is the uh, czar operation exclusive r operation so the value will be four plus one five so this value is five plus q value is 10. sorry q value we have updated it right so q value is 22 so q is 22 so 5 plus 22 is 27 so p value finally p value we got it as 27 and then printing p plus q plus r p is 27 plus q is 10 sorry q is 22 plus r is 12 on summing these three integers we get 40 50 57 61 option d is the correct answer and here comes the next pseudo question so there are three integers here again p q r so these three are initialized to different values p is, is 3 and q as 5 and r as 9 so there is a for loop running from to r uh, value changing from 2 to 4 so then for loop is containing some code finally we are returning p plus q value so it's fine until here so now let's uh, look into the loop uh, like in the first iteration when r is equals to 2 p is equal p is 6 plus q which is 6 plus 5 this is 11. so then again there is a if condition so if you look at uh, this if condition q plus 5 and r minus q but if you observe something here always no matter what the value of r always q plus 5 is greater than r minus q because r is ranging from 2 to 4 but here q plus 5 is always greater so if uh, this statement is true then p value is updated again as p is 9 1 plus 8 9 plus q is 5 this is 14 so now in this in every iteration the p value is 11 and p value is 14 so no matter what i mean to say that this is irrespective of value of r so this p value is not depending upon the value of r so hence we can directly move to the final iteration directly i can jump to final iteration because there is no change at all even this is not depending on r so in the final iteration the p value will be p is 1 plus 8 9 plus q is 5 this is 14 p value is 14 by the end of this loop and then i am printing 14 plus 5 19 is the final answer just option b is the correct one 